Good afternoon, dear students. Uh, can you hear me? Tulanjali, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I hope uh, that we can start now. And uh, because we, today we have our faculty board at uh, 2 p.m. So uh, I am going to speak uh, to before 2. Anyway, uh, I think uh, this is very important uh, lecture series. And normally this lecture series is conducted by uh, myself and Dr. Amali. But since she's in a sabbatical leave, uh, in a maternity leave, I am going to complete this lecture series. Uh, there are two parts uh, in this lecture, food safety and legislation management. So this is very important. Uh, and uh, you all have to study, you all have to listen carefully, and you all have to do your homework to, uh, to, uh, and engage with me to complete this uh, uh, lecture successfully because it, this is very practical one. If you go to industry or if you go to uh, uh, start your own business, then it is very important to know what is food science, uh, food safety. So can you hear me? Any problem? Hello, do you have any problem? No, sir. Right, well. So, uh, I think uh, there are around 18 people, others will join and the weather is not good today also, so others, sometimes they can't join. So anyway, we will share the lecture in LMS. So, what is food safety? And you know what is food? Uh, so, there are different food varieties are available and different producers are also available so uh, so first of all i will explain why food safety is important and uh, i will cover my area food legislation management first then i will start food safety management so this is uh, somewhat very uh, uh, very 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 good and very important one and also uh, the time is not good but after lunch is very uh, bad time. So I will try to do my, in my best and you also can talk. So uh, I think uh, we have two hour lecture normally I do for around one and one and a half maximum. So most probably I will do around one hour lecture because I know two hours are, it's, uh, it's very uh, difficult to listen. So what you have to do is, I am not going to read all the slides and explain all the, uh, all the slides. So you have to read these things and understand. So I will explain the important things and uh, the, the things are not available in this slide. So you know food safety is very important because they are a, a big topics. You know, the, they are very important issues, very critical issues in the country. Uh, can you give me an example for that food safety issues? Report on Sri Lanka. Can you remember that one? Can you remember aflatoxin detection in coconut oil before uh, two months ago? It, it is also belongs to food safety. So you, if you, if you can find my uh, last year question paper, you can see the question regarding the. Uh, aflatoxin detection. So how is that case? So, so we all know there is a case, there is an issue regarding the aflatoxin. So how to manage it? So uh, do we have a management system for that one or not? So how to, how to inform how it works? Likewise, we are going to discuss all these things under this module. Okay. Here you can see LOS learning outcomes. After completion of this uh, module, uh, you can understand the concepts and food, uh, food laws and legal background you can understand. And what are the common food laws and regulation 
available in Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, legal issues. What, what type of legal issues are available and how to handle those things and how to report those things. We are going to discuss these things. And especially, this is very important, the last one, basic skills to conduct legal research activities and writing skills in the food industry. So, you know, you are a food technologist, your dream, sometimes your dream to be a food technologist or maybe a lecturer, maybe a doctor, maybe a uh, doctor means a PhD holder and maybe uh, you, you may start your own industry, your own business. So for that, for all these things, uh, this type of legal activities and legal studying of legal background is very important. And uh, basically, we you have continuous assess assessments and uh, exam. So uh, I don't know still, I don't know how it happens uh, since this uh, COVID situation. So if not, uh, you will be, you will give 30 and 70 marks, but still I can't say the exact, uh, exact percentage. And also you will have four assignments in this assignment, in this lecture series. Uh, the first one is to write a brief report on Sri Lankan uh, Food Act and regulations. For that one, you can select one or two uh, food uh, regulations and go through the regulation and uh, write a report. And the same one to prepare a newspaper article. It means, uh, as I explained earlier, there are so many food safety issues are available and reporting. So uh, you all have to select one incident and write a newspaper article. The third one, brief online presentation. It means, as I uh, told you in assignment one, then you can select one regulations. There are around 23rd regulations in, the, in Sri Lanka, functioning in Sri Lanka. So you can select one uh, regulation out of those uh, 20 or 30, then you can study this regulation and present it with your own example. And the final one is designing a food label. We are going to talk about food labeling and how to design a label. There are uh, so many laws and regulations in designing food labels. So uh, the ultimately, you will be able to design a food label correctly. So uh, those are the assignments I'm going to give you. And we will discuss, we will be discussing these areas. Uh, first of all, you know, introduction and importance of food laws and regulations. Then food laws and regulations, uh, which function in, functioning in Sri Lanka and Food Act. Have you ever heard this uh, word, Food Act? Well, I will explain. Food Act and amendments are there. And SLSI standards, I think it's a very common uh, term, Sri Lanka standard institution. It is actually the standardizing body in Sri Lanka. It's a government uh, body functioning in Sri Lanka is available in Aranyapit, Colombo. And what are the international regulatory bodies? You may uh, heard about ISO and WHO standards. And there are so many international regulatory bodies are available, uh, which, uh, which we have to follow uh, before starting a food industry or before working in food, before working on food. And application of food laws and regulation in an industrial level, so it is important, and Food Diversity Committee and other uh, responsible organizations and persons. All these things are very important, so therefore, if you have any question, any doubt, please raise hand and ask your question. That's my advice. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> before starting this, uh, before moving to the lecture, uh, I'm going to ask a question from you. So you all have to answer this question. Uh, now you are doing food uh, technology. So what is your objective? Do you have objective? You may have objective to complete this degree because your parents are, uh, they are looking at you. So you have to complete this degree. That's one objective. So somebody, if you have any objective, uh, regarding, I think there are several areas. So after completion of this degree, you can go, you can start your own business and you can work with other companies. Then 
normal jobs are available maybe teaching or any government job and you can go for another country go to another country so uh, <clears throat> out of these objectives out of those examples if you have any objective any goal to achieve uh, let me know there are very common ways uh, very common paths as i mentioned but uh, rest of others if you have any other new one could you please let me know that one i will give you uh, 10 second seconds let's see your ideas no ideas right then uh, when i start my uh, undergraduate in uh, 2010 then i had a dream to start my own business and to be a lecturer in this industry in this uh, stream and i had those targets that time so i work for that one then uh, i have completed my post phd also and joined it the this university and last week i have started my own business so so what i uh, suggest you because if you can join sometimes you may join uh, with government industry so the salary will be around 30000 to 50000 right i think you can understand what i am saying is and if you when you join with a uh, private company then the salary will be around 50000 the initial i am talking about initial salary and uh, you can uh, you can sometimes if you have a first class uh, with highest gpa then you, you you will have a chance to join with the staff then the salary will be around uh, 200000 or 250000 so what happen if you start your own business then you can earn a lot so your ultimate target should be started starting a your own business so you you can work with a government or private public or private company institute but your ultimate objective should be to start your own business so i propose you all can uh, you all can think on that and i wish that you can start that one because i do lectures for columbia university and vibe university and other sub uh, private institutes so they all uh, they all uh, didn't know about these uh, parts so when i have to explain uh, these things they all agreed so i think uh, you all can start your own business rather than having a uh, rather than uh, conducting rather than than working uh, institute okay then you know food when i ask this question what is food i know you all know that this definition and uh, what i wanted to say here food means for all foods there are process but there are some natural foods but most of the commercial foods we have to process this thing so if we are going to process food we can we perhaps it may be a partially processed or a fully processed one so they are so we have to learn food laws and regulation and food safety because you can't sell you can't transport you can't pack you can't store uh, food items without uh, adhering to the food laws and regulations available in the country as well as in the world right then uh, give me a exam give me you are comments on these three pictures the first one you can see it's a, a cigarette advertisement in smoking about uh, smoking advertisement but here you can see a dentist you can see here a dentist is recommending this uh, brand but uh, this is uh, the, the right side you can see a very common picture you all know this thing the very famous cricketer he is promoting 
some uh, instant noodles brand. These are these are two stories, but in the bottom, <coughs> the bottom you can see uh, there are two pictures. Uh, the first one is the advertisement. The second one is the uh, actual one. Then what you also have this uh, experience. Uh, we are going to order some foods or fancy items through uh, maybe eBay or Alibaba. Then the advertisement is very beautiful, but the actual is not good. So this is, these things are happening in the food industry. You have this experience. It's a very uh, nutritive, high nutritive food. You can see uh, there are some famous actors and uh, cricketers. They promote some foods, but actually there is no such nutrition. But those, uh, some of those foods are uh, not uh, good for the health. And uh, sometimes you can remember one story regarding Milo, our ex-president. Uh, one time he uh, told that Milo contained very high amount of sugar. So that is also uh, my personal view. It is actually a misleading uh, comment. So misleading is belong also belongs to uh, food laws and regulations. So how to avoid these things? So. Uh, before starting a food industry, before joining with the food industry, you have to have a thorough knowledge on these things. And uh, you know the uh, the traffic light system is there now, red, uh, white. We have a traffic light system in our country. Then you can now you can see all uh, ready to serve, ready to drink beverages. We can see this color light system, traffic light system on the label. Right, with these examples, uh, now it's time to discuss uh, food control. The lecture series is the, this module is about food uh, safety and legislation management. So as I told you, yeah. there are two major parts, <clears throat> sorry, food safety, and legislation management. So legislation management, when we when it comes to legislation management, we have to discuss about food control. Uh, I, I, I suppose you know this word, controlling, how to control, this very common word. So food, you know what is food and you know what is the meaning of control or controlling. So when we discuss it, those two words together, food controlling, then it is a new one. So uh, the food controlling means to control the possible hazards. Hazard means accidents or some uh, safety issues. So according to this FAO, you know, Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, according to them, food controlling is, it is defined as a mandatory regulatory activity. Mandatory means it is critical. We have to follow this thing. Mandatory regulatory act, enforcement by national or local authorities to provide consumer protection. This is very important. Consumer prote protection is a very critical, very important one. But uh, when we consider it about the, when you're considering on the issues happening in the Sri Lanka and, and other countries, as an example, this uh, aflatoxin issue in coconut oil, so, uh, how do you feel? Will they provide consumer protection for us or not? And ensure that all food during production, handling, storage, processing, and distribution. <clears throat> there are five stages. Production, handling, storage, processing, and distribution. So, these five stages are very important. So for almost all the food industries, we have to follow this. We have to pay our attention on these five stages. Also, and fit for human consumption, confirm to safety and quality requirements and now honestly and accurate labeled as prescribed by law. There are laws, there is an act and there are amendments and they have, uh, you know, the meaning of law. So, there is a law for food 
so we have to follow the food uh, the ultimate target should be provide consumer protection and do produce safe food and there are five critical main stages from raw material to stores there are five stages we have to strictly adhere to the uh, laws and regulations prescribed by the law understood mangitra bola therwaki right then uh, this is very important national food control system in sri lanka now you know what is food controlling what is the definition and uh, you don't need to remember the definition so uh, but this is very important then we have a food control system in sri lanka we call it as central food control administration and there are five wings right we have a food, food national food control system in sri lanka to for what to provide safe foods right as as i explained earlier ultimate objective to provide safe foods protect our consumers so for that one we have a central food control administration system we call it as national food control system so both uh, are similar for that one there are five wings there are five pillars right the first one is analytical service the second one is regional or peripheral food control administration third one is food advisory committee then food authority for imports you know you, you may heard the custom custom means they inspect all the imports and exports so they are also we have uh, a wing food authority for imports dg custom director general of custom is the responsible person and food authority for excisable foods commissioner of excise what is the excise excisable foods means belongs to alcohol ne ogol danna den commissioner of excise kiyanne alcohol sambandha vinna lanka pradhaniya he is also belongs to central food control system so there are as i explained earlier there are five wings so uh, with these five wings in this uh, natural uh, this natural food control administration unit consists with these five wings and they cover all the uh, way all the parts all the units and under analytical services if we have a issue if we have issue food issue so uh, i i i i think you can remember the uh, aflatoxin issue then what happened we sent the samples to laboratories but we can't send those samples to external laboratories but we have seven laboratories for for therefore we have to if we have a issue we have to send our samples to uh this laboratories so to these laboratories we can't send these samples to outside laboratories so there are several laboratories government analyst or approved analyst government analyst means rajya rasa parikshaka it's very common ne the ogolu hamo danna rajya rasa parikshaka karyali kene ka so it's also a lab and medical research institute it is also very common uh, these days uh to covid right and uh, there are uh, food labs in anuradhapura kalutara purunayagala candy and kalam mc means municipal council uh, these laboratories are governing under the municipal council so uh, so uh, what i wanted to explain here is the central food control administration unit consists with five wings and we have seven laboratories government laboratories so if we have any issue imports exports and local production if we have any issue we have to send the samples 
to one of those laboratories, right? There are the reason. In the worry, everything. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Then, regional or peripheral food control administration. So I have, I have, uh, I did this lecture for your seniors, two uh, senior badges. But at that that time, I have no such example. But now you all know. It. You know, uh, Medical Research Institute, Institute and uh, PHI, MOH, with this COVID issue, you, we all know these institutes. So it's very easy to explain. Right, okay. Then uh, let me discuss about regional and peripheral food control administration units. It means MOH, PHI, food and FDIs. Likewise, we have regional units it means we have a central food control system as we discussed under that one we have a different regional control system so in your area maybe Kalambu, there is a municipal council in the municipal council we have a laboratory and we have phi and we have food and drug inspectors in uh, maybe you are from candy then candy area also you have this type of uh, res responsible people and institutes. Maybe Pradeshya Sabha, maybe uh, local governments between Pradesh Sabha, MOHOPs, and uh, assistant government agents, deputy provincial directors, likewise. Uh, they also belong to this central food control administrative system. And food advisory committee. We, we will discuss the food address recommend later. And this is very important. And food authority for imports uh, is, as I explained earlier, DG Custom, Director General of Customs. He is the responsible, uh, uh, he's the responsible uh, the, 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 uh, officer for this Central Food Control Administration for all the imports and exports. DG is there. So we can't import and export any food item without having uh, permission from the Food Control Administration. And they have to follow, they have to adhere to the national and international regulations. So we can't export. Sometimes, you know, uh, if you have friends in Australia or New Zealand like countries, so you can't, ex you can't take uh, processed foods for those countries. Likewise, there are different uh, legal systems, so you have to adhere. It belongs to customs officers, DG customs. And uh, you can't take, the boys, you know that you can't take two point, uh, the maximum amount of alcohol you can take from the airport, Sri Lanka is 2.5 liters, 2.5 bottles. You can't, you can't take more than that one. So there are laws and regulations. And uh, when you are traveling some country to Sri Lanka, then you can't take cigarettes. There is a law. But if you are traveling from Sri Lanka to another country, you can buy cigarettes from Sri Lanka. Airport. So likewise, there are different laws and regulations available. So you will be able to observe and uh, uh, challenge. Sometimes you can challenge those laws and regulations. So, and excisable foods, I have explained these things. You know, the excisable foods, alcohol based food products, uh, the wine, beer, whiskey, brandy. So, for that one, you know, the in Sri Lanka, the maximum alcohol percentage you can uh, sometimes, you know, we have only. Uh, you know, liquor shops, but we have no uh, liquors in the in supermarkets. But other countries, they have liquor in supermarkets. So it's very easy to buy, uh, buy a whiskey or brandy from supermarket. But in Sri Lanka, it is very difficult. We have to go to the, go to a bar. So uh, likewise, uh, there are 
different systems in our country. So uh, I think it's clear we have five wings in national food control system. If you have any issue regarding the alcohol percentage, regarding apatoxin, regarding a label, for all these things, uh, we have to send the samples to those laboratories and based on the lab reports generated by these laboratories, we can go to the court. If not, we can't go, okay? We will discuss the procedures later. So this is a general introduction. And uh, here you can see the differences in between laws and regulations. Uh, so laws means it is a bill process. Parliamentary Then we can't uh, make laws. So we, we have to send. There is a procedure. We have to send the bill through the parliament and then it, after getting their approval, then it converts into a law. And regulations, but we can uh, develop regulations based on these laws. For example, for example, we have a, we have a law for traffic control. traffic control for that one, we have different regulations. One or two law to control that law, we have sets of regulations. We can't overtake on pedestrian crossing. And there are some traffic light systems on pedestrian crossings. And you can't stop on pedestrian crossing. Likewise, we have sets of regulations, but the law is traffic control. In the food, when it comes to food industry also, we have laws, we have an act called as Food Act. Under these food acts, there are laws and regulations. So if, if it is a regulation, the objective is of these regulations to maintain the hygienic practices from uh, production, preparation, processing, transportation, and storage and distribution for all these stages it means the entire the life cycle of food products life cycle means raw material to final product so we have to follow the regulations and laws establish food is standards we have standards we will discuss these things later what are the standards prescribed safe condition of use of food additives pesticide and irradi irradiation of foods uh, there are some laws. Require informative labeling is very important. How to develop the label. An objective of the Sri Lanka food control system, I think we have discussed these things, so you can read uh, when you are free. I'm not going to explain. This is about the Food Act. Uh, as I told you earlier, we have Food Act, but unfortunately, it was written in 1980, and we have another amendments now. <clears throat> According to this uh, Food Act, you can understand, the Minister of Health, he is the highest head, head person. And then Food Advisory Committee is there. Under the Food Advisory Committee, there are some subcommittees. And uh, the Chief Food Authority is the Health DG, Director General of Health. He is the chief food authority. Then there are some food authorities as we discussed, regional and peripheral authorities, MOH, local government. Likewise, uh, we have uh, food authorities and officers. Then they, you know, they uh, examine, inspect foods and get samples and seizing. Neither then minister will seize Karani. He is not going to seize this one. So there is a there is a system. Minister of Health, he is the top person here, and then Food Advisory Committee is there, and there are subcommittees. And under the Food Advisory Committee, and, and so, sorry, the Chief Food Authority is the head of uh, this Food Advisory Committee. Chief Food, food Authority means Director General of Health. So, that's the General Tamar, make it. Then there are some food authorities, and uh, as we explained, then you know that uh, approved analysts are there 
and they report uh, they are after the the authorized authorized officers send samples to these laboratories they generate reports based on these reports we can get the legal action legal proceeding so this is the process you can see the phi moh uh, food and drug inspectors they take samples from your uh, from the market and any place and they directly uh, send the sample to the approved laboratories and get the reports and take legal actions based on these reports that is the system so food advisory committee is very important here you can see the members of food advisory committee uh, you also can join this food advisory committee so carefully listen and see how to join food advisory committee then who is the chairman director general of health as i explained earlier so uh, can the general director general of health he is a chairman of this committee and secretary is the director of environmental and occupational health you know uh, the the secretary of this committee the automatically he or she may be is, is the director of environmental and occupational health and government analyst he is a member government analyst means rajya rasa parikshak then city analyst of kalambu municipal council he, he is the city analyst means nagarika rasa parikshak he is uh, now uh, dr rajanayaka he is the city analyst of kalambu municipal council he will join with us for our uh, in the future for some lectures and director general of customs you know he is also a member and chief medical officer of health of the kalamu municipal council kolamu aradha sabhave pradhana vaidya niladari nowadays you can see uh, this uh, the, the chief medical officer he is always talking to talk to the media regarding covid issues and representative from ministry of food representative from ministry of trade representative from minister of local government and representative from sri lanka standard institution still is that these are the members and nutrition is from mri medical research institute food technologist so it means you can join there is a chance and experts in food science or food technology there are two people, two vacancies experts mean industrial people they can join representative for commercial uh, interest and industrial representatives consumers and chief food and drug inspector so this is the uh, this is the these are the members of food advisory committee so you can join as food technologist and nutritionist and expert in a food in the field of food science and uh, and also industrial representative and also the consumer you also can with this committee later right i think it's clear this is very 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 important what is food advisory committee and uh, who is the chairman of of that committee so uh, it is very important now you can read uh, i'm not going to explain the differences between laws and regulations so you can read these things and ethics you can read these things then what are the similarities of laws and regulations you can read these things also differences uh, i think uh, you can read these things so this is about history i'm not going to explain history and uh, codex alimentarius commission this is again very important one uh, do not pay your attention here but i will explain about uh, codex alimentarius commission later we are going to discuss international bodies under that topic we will discuss uh, the codex alimentarius commission what is the codex alimentarius and who, who are the members likewise here you can see the history of sri lankan food laws and regulation system from 1862 but we have developed established our food act in 1980 and there are two other amendments for that uh, 
put that so 1991 and 2011 so we have food we have food that which is established in 1980 and there are two amendments and you can uh, download food ducts and regulations from this link uh, and uh, this is the front page of food that you can download this document and read uh, and uh, there are five uh, sorry not five one two three four five six seven areas in the food act so we have discussed on uh, the food act was established in 1980 there are two amendments and in this food act it has explained five areas manufacturing how to manufacture foods and what what type of laws and regulations we have to follow and when we advertise foods you can see there are advertisements and labels so uh, when we are advertising food how to do that part and selling if we are going to sell foods you you know that we have to cover these things and we have to uh, put the price so likewise selling and storation storage and distribution you know the safety regulations are there uh, under the food act you can see there are several regulations for food storage and distribution and importation we have discussed this thing uh, before imports we have to uh, or somebody the agent had he or she has to send samples to the relevant laboratory then uh, based on the reports on the on that sample we can only we can import so how to do this thing we can read from this act and cc cc means you know cc can work in all the unknown over the water line single link in only over the how to take legal actions based on the based on the based on these foods and labeling regulation how to develop a label so uh, likewise there are uh, seven areas the, all these areas have as covered by the sri lanka food act so if you are going to work in any industry you are belongs to one of these or uh, sets of these areas so therefore it is very important to read and remember not not need to remember but you have to read the food that carefully uh, and understand the situation and the main functions of the sri lanka food that to prevent uh, contamination and uh, prevention of manufacturing selling unhygienic or uh, unsafe foods so you know the objectives the main objective of these documents of this uh, food act is to protect consumer neither our ape me can system again objective is to protect consumer to protect uh, consumer and to uh, stop and uh, to control uh, food fraud so how again food sambandha thiyana varadi dewal na thiyana ta me ke main objective so i am going to stop from uh, this slide today so i think it's very clear to you what is why is it why uh, is it important and uh, today we have discussed about the national food control system and uh, there were several discussions uh, definitions so under the national food control system there are five wings and uh, what are the differences in between laws and regulations and how the food national food control system is work it is working how it how is it work and the member of members of food advisory committee then there are several members representing all the areas related to food and uh, ethics and uh, these similarities and differences and the history about uh, sri lankan food control system and how to download these acts and uh, regulations and we have food act which was established in 1980 and under this food act they have uh, it it explain about seven areas and the objective so we have discussed these things today and i i, I suppose you all understood it very well and uh, we will discuss the other slides and the rest areas 
next week. So now it's time to ask questions. If you have any question, I'm ready to answer. If not, I can stop this lecture because I have to participate to the faculty board. So if you have a question, I will give you uh, 10 to 20 seconds, then you can ask. It seems no questions neither. Right.